Good afternoon again, everyone. Dear friends, family, and all those who have gathered here today, we come together in the wake of an unexpected and profound loss to pay tribute to and remember Mary Daly Tusser Serret, whose sudden departure from this world has left us in shock and deep sorrow. In times like these, words often fail to capture the depth of our emotions, the enormity of our loss, and the acute sense of disbelief that accompanies an unexpected goodbye. As we celebrate Mary's life, let us remember that her spirit lives on through the many lives she touched, her kindness and her unwavering courage. Though the pain of a sudden departure may seem unbearable, we can take solace in the fact that her memory will never fade. As we move forward, let us keep her love and light in our hearts and honor her memory by being the best versions of ourselves. Mary was born on Sunday, December 26, 1954. And from the very beginning, she was always a source of positive energy and strength. As she ventured into adulthood, Mary embraced life with open arms. Her passion for plants, serving her Lord, and sharing his word with others was not just a choice, but a true calling. She approached every day with an enthusiasm that was both inspiring and humbling, touching the lives of all those who she encountered. By now, everyone knew, don't approach Auntie Daly to complain that someone did you wrong, as the answer remained the same each time, forget that and pray. Oh, pray for them. And if you interjected and continued to complain, you would get, yeah, hear what I say? Forget that and pray. And this time, the voice will get a little stirred. Mary was very obedient to the word of God. Jesus told that the Sabbath day was made for our benefit. And this we will find in Mark chapter 2, verse 27. The Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. So Mary believed that the Sabbath was a sacred day to be spent in worship and reverence, directing our thoughts and actions towards God. So Mary prepared her Sunday meals on a Saturday evening or very early Sunday morning, as her Sundays were reserved for her Lord. A day she believed was meant to be a blessing as we experience and celebrate God's presence with us through the Holy Spirit. Because of this belief, she was always excited to go to church and gather with the members of the Cameron community to worship on Sunday. It is this same excitement and joy that was leading her to church on Easter Sunday when she took ill. And though she knew something was not right with her body, she focused on her soul. For those who gathered around her to her sister, express that through it all she never stopped praying at this point we would like to express our gratitude to linda april aaron and sasan for their response to our beloved mary last sunday morning mary's life was a tapestry of meaningful relationships and memorable experiences she had an incredible ability to connect with people on a deep level her friendships were not casual they were profound bonds, marked by loyalty, empathy, and a genuine concern for others. Tash will tell you, anytime Mary said, Nicole on my mind, when last you talked to her, call her, something was going on, insignificant as it may be. One of the most remarkable aspects of Mary's personality was her generosity. She just loved to share, sharing everything. Passed by Mary on a Sunday, or any day for a matter of fact, and you are sure to get a hot plate of food. Sometimes she shared all the food and did not put aside any for herself. Not to forget her green thumb and these plants, always willing to set a plant for you. As a matter of fact, she always had a second or third one that she would give to anyone that asked. You know how many plants I asked Auntie Daly, Auntie Daly for and couldn't keep them alive past a few weeks? In her personal life, Mary was a devoted wife to Michael, brother Susut, 
and parents in Natasha, Michelle, now deceased, having also departed this life on her Easter Sunday in 2016, and Rachel. She cherished her family above all else and provided them with endless love and support. Her grandchildren, Nikolai, Dominic, Ethan, and Chloe were the center of her universe, and she reveled in every moment spent with them. Despite the many roles she played though, Auntie Daly was also deeply committed to spreading the word of God. Her involvement in church and ministering to others was not just a pastime. It was a testament to her belief that with God, all things are possible. The sudden loss of Auntie Daly is a stark reminder of the fragility of life. It challenges us to find the meaning in the midst of our grief and seek comfort in the memories we share. Her death leaves a void that cannot be filled, yet her life leaves a legacy that cannot be forgotten. Though her time with us was cut short, the breadth of her influence and the depth of her presence were immense. As we grapple with the reality of her absence, let us find solace in the fact that Auntie Daly's life was well lived. She loved deeply, laughed heartily, and made a difference in the lives of many. Mary, Daly, Mommy, Grandma, your ultimate departure on Sunday, March, your untimely departure on Sunday, March 31st, 2024, has left us reeling. But your spirit will continue to live on in our hearts and memories. You may have left this world too soon, but the footprints you left on our lives will endure forever. We bid you farewell with heavy hearts, but also with a deep appreciation for the time we were privileged to share with you. Rest in peace, dear wife, mother, grandmother, sister, aunt, cousin, and friend. You will be dearly missed, but never forgotten. We have another eulogy by Anelia to say. Agape love showed up in Auntie Daly's every interaction. 
and it was not only felt by her family, but by everyone who came into contact with her. My earliest memories of Auntie Daly include her cooking for the entire family every Sunday after church. Her sisters, nieces, nephews, her parents when they were alive, all knew that Sunday lunch after church by Auntie Daly was a staple in our family. That woman could have made a fried pork boy. And don't talk about that roast baked fresh every morning and evening. Everybody know if you're going by the river and you're feeling a bit peckish, all you have to do is call out to Auntie Daly and that piece of bake guaranteed. Once she outside water in her plants, Auntie, boy, where you have? I make a bake this morning, but I have nothing to put in it, you know. A little butter, that good enough. Looking back at it now through adult eyes, what makes Auntie Daly's generosity so amazing and Christ-like was that she didn't have much. But whatever she did have, could and would share. Everywhere Auntie Daly went, she always seemed to be drawn to a soul that needed a spirit filled with. Even in taking out the sister to the clinic, he can testify that she somehow always ended up chatting with someone, listening to their life story, and offering a word of prayer and hopefulness. This evangelism didn't just extend to strangers though. As we got older and drifted away from Sunday worship, she would call her nieces and nephew every week and insist we come to church, never giving up, week after week, until, you know, we just saying, you see, me, I can't take Auntie Daly calling me today, you know. I just going to church and get that over with, yes? The least vengeful person you would find is Auntie Daly. Sometimes you go into her with a story and you want a little sympathy, and a little back up, you know, you want somebody to say, yes, they're wrong. And after listening to your whole story, while she pruning that mini forest she have in the gallery there, all Auntie Daly giving you is, pray for them, don't study that. True story. Auntie Daly, kill you know a man, bounce my car and write it off, kill. Oh God, so you man dead or what? I say, no, you good, but my car mash up. She say, Forgive him now. Pray for him. God will help you fix your car. And if it's real, real bad, like a life or death situation, then you know you're getting a nine-day intercessory novena. And you could bet anything that change coming after that. Between her devotion to prayer every day at 5, 3, and 6, and exercising her green thumb, volunteering at church, roping in Mr. Johnny and Alifa to help with all sorts of things in church. I don't know where Auntie Daly got the time or the energy to be such a devout wife and mother, and later on grandmother. Her family did not one day suffer neglect due to her commitments. And as the children grew and left home, and it was just her and uncle, she continued to fiercely love him and care for him through every circumstance. Wow, what a woman. Oh gosh, Auntie, what we wouldn't give Funko to get one more beat. For Nikolai to hear you laugh one more time. And for us to hear you telling Auntie Lima, Lima, you're falling behind in the daily rosary again. We miss you so, so, so much already. But we take comfort in the knowledge that in your darkest hour, you were able to experience the reciprocation of neighborly love that you exemplified throughout your life. And we thank Linda, April, and Sassan for being there for you in your time of need. We even take further solace in the fact that as the time fast approached, you were steadfast in prayer, calling on the blood of Jesus and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. We are certain your path is clear. So sleep well, our Saint Mary, knowing that even as you took your last breath 
and expressed your love for your family. We heard it and felt it every day of your life. Your love continues to be felt even beyond the constraints of your physical form as we honor the legacy you left behind. A legacy that shows us not just by words but by actions how to truly live in God's love. Love one another, love one another as I have loved you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. In the waters of baptism, Mary died with Christ, and rose with him to new life. May she now share with him eternal glory.
brothers and sisters, we have come together to renew our trust in Christ, who by dying on the cross has freed us from eternal death, and by rising has opened for us the gates of heaven. So let us pray for our sister, that she may share in Christ's victory. And let us pray for ourselves, that the Lord may grant us the gift of his loving consolation. God of loving kindness, listen favorably to our prayers. Strengthen our belief that your Son has risen from the dead, and our hope that your servant Mary will also rise with him. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please sit now for the reading. from the book of Apocalypse. I, John, saw a new heaven and a new earth. The first heaven and first earth had disappeared now, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city and the new Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven as a beautiful, as beautiful as a bride, all dressed for a husband. Then I heard a loud voice call from the throne. You see this city? Here God lives among men. He will make his home among them, and they shall be his people, and he will be their God, his name, God with them. He will wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there will be no more death, no more mourning or sadness. The world of the past has gone. Then, the one sitting on the throne spoke. Now I am making the whole, making a whole new creation, he said. I will give water from the well of life and proves, and who proves victorious, I will say his God and his son to me. The word of the Lord.
God's will, says the Lord, that I should lose nothing of all that he has given to me and that I should raise it up on the last day. Be with you. With your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. <clears throat> Jesus raised his eyes to heaven and said, Father, I want those you have given me to be with me where I am, so that they may always see the glory you have given me because you loved me before the foundation of the world. Father, righteous one, the world has not known you, but I have known you, and these have known that you have sent me. I have made your name known to them, and will continue to make it known, so that the love with which you loved me may be in them, and so that I may be in them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to the Lord Jesus Christ. Like many of you, I can't believe that we are here for Mary's funeral. That so totally unexpected, so totally out of even thinking about it, because she was such a busy person, busy about the Lord's work, energetic. She couldn't stand to see anybody not get what they need. Such a wonderful person. Such a beautiful person. And furthermore, she took upon herself the responsibility of leading the community, Christian community, up around the church and was always ready and willing to do anything that was ne necessary. She even started up the Friday adoration up in Cameron, where she would spend time before the Lord That was a practice for what she's doing now, spending time before the Lord. Because when we come to a moment like this, questions pop up in our minds. We ask, well, what now for Mary? Has she just gone out of existence? Our faith tells us no, that we are created by God to live forever. Each of us, all of us, Mary. So that at the end of her earthly life, that was not the end of her. Can I ask that everybody turn off the volume on their cell phones? You. And it was not the end, it is not the end for her. In fact, it is a beginning of eternity for her. That she went from here before the Lord and she took her life with her. 
When we come before the Lord, we all come to be judged. We know that. So what do we take? What can we take? We can't take the car. It can't fit. We can't take the box. It don't fit in there. We can't take a bank account. We can't take all of the things that we have attained in this life. You know those things that we hold on to. We can't take them. What can we take? What do we take? What has Mary taken? The only thing that we can take is how we have lived, how we have loved. Jesus said at that first Holy Thursday, at the Last Supper, a new commandment I give, love one another as I have loved you. He loved us with everything in his being. He loved us with his whole life. He loved us and took our sins on his shoulders. He suffered and died for us. So that at the end of our life, heaven will be open, eternity will be open, life with God will be open for us for all eternity. Because at a time like this, we also kind of wonder, what about me when my time comes? What will happen with me? What will happen to me? We are called, therefore, to prepare for that moment by how we live now, by what we do now, by how we treat other people now. We are called to practice being with God. And Mary was a great example of practicing being with God. When we are called to practice being with God by how we live. And he told us that in Matthew's Gospel, remember he said when the time of judgment comes, he'll separate us and he'll say to those who have lived righteous lives, come you blessed of my Father into kingdom prepared for you before the foundation of the world because I was hungry and you fed me. I was thirsty, you gave me something to drink. I was sick and in prison, you visited me. Naked, you clothed me. Homeless, you housed me. In need, and you helped me. And we will say to him, Lord, when did we do all those things to you, for you? And he will say to us, so long as you did this to one of the least of these, my brothers or sisters, you did it to me. And then he will say to the others, Depart from me, you cursed, into the everlasting fire prepared for you before the foundation of the world. Because when I was in need in all of those different ways, you never took me on. And we, they'll say, Lord, when did we see you and not help you out? And he will say the same. So long as you did this to one of the least of these, you did it to me. We all want deep in our hearts, in our souls, deep in our faith. We all want, ultimately, to be with God forever. Eternity is a very, very long time. And we want to be with Him for all eternity. And so He calls us and He says, Listen, prepare now, check out what you're doing. He says that to every single one of us. Because there's not one of us in this church, except maybe a couple of the little children, who can say, I have not sinned. We all have. All these priests here, me, everybody, or everybody. We have sinned. And having sinned, we know that we need to repent and change. And it's never too late so long as we're still alive and we're still alive. So of the very many acts of love that Mary committed in this life, and there are many, 
She's committing one last act of love right here, right now, today. She has called you and me, each of us, all of us, into this church to do a few things. Why? Because she is now in a position where she can see God. And she knows how important it is for us to make our way there. And therefore, she has loved each of us into this church today to hear God's word, to hear God's call, to worship him, to pray for the repose of her soul and to pray for ourselves so that we will be changed people that our hearts can turn away from any and all negativity and sinfulness we know what our sins are nobody has to come and point a finger at us and say you did this or that we know and so before God we need to repent of those things. We need to change our lives. We need to follow the Ten Commandments. I want to talk about two of those commandments. The third commandment, and this is what gets a lot of us. Third commandment, remember that thou keep holy the Sabbath day. Hmm. What does that mean? It means find yourself at Mass every weekend, Saturday evening or Sunday, the Sabbath. And remember, it's a commandment from God. Therefore, if we choose to break that commandment, we turn our backs on God. That is sin. And in fact, we turn our backs completely on him. It's a mortal sin. It cuts us off from the life of God. Time for us to turn back to that. You know, we, COVID has come and we seem to have forgotten that. It's time to remember it. And Mary is doing this act of love for us to remember it. That we have to come to worship God. And how? At the Last Supper, Jesus, using the imperative mood, which is an order, said, do this in memory of me. A lot of people, you know, say, when I see them, I say, well, I don't see, I'm not seeing that mass. No, I, I could stay home and pray. Hmm. But I have two questions about that. You could, but do you? And secondly, it's not a case of either go to Mass or stay home and pray. It's a good case of both go to Mass and stay home and pray. We need a relationship with God. We need both, not one or the other. And He calls us today to come and worship Him. Turn back to Him fully. No excuses. No excuses. The only one is that we sick in bed, we can't get out. And the other commandment I'd like to talk about is the eighth commandment. You remember what's the eighth commandment? Mm. I see many people can help me. What's the eighth commandment? The eighth commandment is, remember, sorry, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Hmm. So that means, just on the, on the surface, you can't lie about somebody else. But the church teaches us that there are two ways that we can break that Eighth Commandment, that we can sin against God by sinning against the Eighth Commandment. They're called calumny and detraction. Calumny, as the word says, means a lie. So if I come and I tell a lie about you, and I spoil your good name in the sight of the community, I have broken the Eighth Commandment. Detraction. Detraction is telling the truth. But, an example. 
I know you from time you're small, and I know that when you were 18 or 19, you did that, something that is scandalous. I know you did that. But having done it, you repented, you turned away, and you completely changed your life and lived a beautiful life of, of virtue ever since. But I know what you did way back then. And here now, 30, 40 years later, you have a good name in the community. And if I go and tell them the truth about what you did at the age of nine, which they have no business knowing, and I have no business saying, because it makes, it makes no difference to anybody else, but by doing so, I will take away his good name. I will take away your good name. I have sinned against God. I have committed a mortal sin against the Eighth Commandment. And you know, a lot of us do that a lot. Don't we? We even give it that little name and we try to excuse it. You know, like when we don't tell the truth, we, we try to excuse it by, well, not just a little white lie. It's not a white lie. It's not a white lie. It's just a lie or is it truth? And the truth sets you free. So, the word to describe what we do is gossip. What are we doing when we're gossiping? When we have a nice juicy piece against somebody, and we go and we spread it all over the place. And we're happy to be the first one to spread it too. When we're gossiping, we're taking away somebody else's good name. No matter what they've done, we have no right to do that. So we need to stop dumping on each other and we need to start raising each other up. Where will our society go if we don't? Things are bad enough. And when we treat each other in such a horrible and cavalier manner, we are bringing down our society, we're making it worse. But we are the first ones to stand up and complain, they should do this and they should do that. And what about me? Each of us, I, each of us. What are we doing? Today, right now, at this funeral mass, the Lord is calling to every single one of us here by name and calling us make a change turn away from that negativity in your life turn away from that sin in your life he's calling us to worship him in spirit and truth he is calling us to leave this church different people from when we came in he is calling us to be fully Christian, faithful people. He's calling us to turn away from the sin in our lives. Turn and show love, care, compassion, concern for our brothers and sisters right there among us. And those whom we encounter during our life's journey. So today the Lord says, listen, wake up in fact in the scripture he says wake up my people wake up give a shout he calls us to be the ones to make the change in our world in our society starting in our families to show love to show forgiveness to bring reconciliation no matter what no excuses he did, she did. No love demands forgiveness. Love demands acceptance. And the Lord calls us, go out there and be my body in the world. If we are the body of Christ, which is what the church is in our world, we will bring about the change that is needed. But it requires 
all of us. It requires each of us to make up our minds to be fully Christian. And so as we come here as people of faith, to ask God to be merciful on our sister Mary, to forgive whatever sins she may have committed in this life, to bring her with him into eternal life. We pray also for ourselves. We pray that we too, hearing God's call, will respond to it, will change, will be fully Christian. And so it is with strength of faith that we can pray. Eternal rest grant unto her, O Lord. May she rest in peace. May her soul and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. God, the Almighty Father, raised Christ, his Son from the dead. With confidence, we ask him to save all his people, living and dead. For Mary, who in baptism was given the pledge of eternal life, that she may now be admitted to the company of the saints. Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious, hear us. For our sister, who ate the body of Christ, the bread of life, that she may be raised up on the last day. Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious, hear us. For our deceased relatives and friends, and for all who have helped us, that they may have the reward of their goodness. Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious, hear us. For those who have fallen asleep in the hope of rising again, that they may see God face to face. Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious, For the family and friends of our sister Mary, that they may be consoled in their grief by the Lord, who wept at the death of his friend Lazarus. Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious, And for all of us assembled here to worship in faith, that we may be gathered together again in God's kingdom. Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious, hear us. God, our shelter and our strength, you listen in love to the cry of your people. Hear the prayers we offer for our departed sisters and brothers. Cleanse them of their sins and grant them the fullness of redemption. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Collection will now be taken up and in Mary's name taken up for charity.
pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look favorably on our offerings, O Lord, so that your departed servant Mary may be taken up into the glory with your Son, in whose great mystery of love we are all united. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In Him, the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we are clear. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said a blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of of me. The mystery of faith. Their 
therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her most chaste spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope and Jason our Archbishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleased and to have their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Remember your servant Mary, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that she who is united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. When from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters too, and to all who are pleasing to you and their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages, and praise you without end. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At our Saviour's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to sing, Our God, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace 
peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word and my soul shall be healed. The body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. Amen. Amen. For Holy Communion in the church, in this church, we come up the side aisles and we turn down through the center. There will be four places for Holy Communion, four stations, one just in front of the choir over here and one over here just near to where that person is there with the camera. And then in the middle of the church, over by that door and on that side, over by the door. Okay. And when you're coming up, if you wish, you can sanitize your hands. We have the little machines at the top and also at the sides of the church.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that your servant Mary, for whom we have celebrated this Paschal Sacrament, may pass over to a dwelling place of light and peace. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please sit. Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our sister. May our farewell express our affection for her. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. And so trusting in God, we have prayed together for Mary. And we now come to the last farewell. There is sadness in parting, but we take comfort in the hope that one day we shall see her again and enjoy her friendship. And although this congregation will disperse in sorrow, the mercy of God will gather us together again in the joy of his kingdom. Therefore, let us console one another in the faith of Jesus Christ. I will now sprinkle her body for the last time with holy water as a remembrance that it is through baptism that we enter into eternal life with the Father who we become one with the body of Christ, and then I will incense her body as a sign of the respect in which we hold all human life. And also remembering Psalm 141, saying that our prayers rise to heaven like incense. And so all of our prayers rising to the Father. Sorry to interrupt. If you know an old time song called Please Release Me, PC 6441, I need to get out urgently. Please release me. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our sister Mary in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, she will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for all the blessings which you bestowed upon her in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. And so, merciful Lord, turn towards us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and our sister Mary forever. And so because God has chosen to call our sister Mary from this life to himself, we commit her body to the earth. For we are dust and unto dust we shall return.
brothers and sisters, the Lord Jesus Christ will change our mortal bodies to be like his in glory. For he is risen, the firstborn from the dead. So let us commend our sister to the Lord, that the Lord may embrace her in peace and raise up her body on the last day. The Lord be with you. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Merciful Lord, you know the anguish of the sorrow. You are attentive to the prayers of the humble. Hear your people who cry out to you in their need and strengthen their hope in your lasting goodness. To Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down upon you all and remain with you. Amen. Mary, may the angels lead you in the paradise. May the martyrs come to welcome you and lead you into the holy city with you and the spirit of Jerusalem. May the choirs of angels welcome you and lead you to the bosom of Abraham. And there, where Lazarus is born no longer, may you find eternal rest. My brothers and sisters, our Mass is ended. Let us go as changed people in the love and peace of Christ. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah.
good man. Yeah, some pool bear has this. Come on, begin away. Too sad. Come away. Lady Fung come, Steve, you stay right there, Lady Fung come. Come. Come on, Steve, come on, Steve. Thank you. 
Yeah, yeah. You did that you were in. Uh,
on. Voices! Come on, let me go. Blessed are thou among women, 
and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou among women. And blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace. The Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As she was in the beginning, and now and ever shall be, the world without end. Amen. O oh my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fire of hell. Lead all souls to heaven, and help especially those in most need of God's mercy. O oh Mary, conceived without sin, pray for us who have because to thee. O oh Mary, conceived without sin, pray for us who have because to thee. O oh Mary, conceived without sin, pray for us who have because to thee. Mary, our dearest mother, pray to Jesus for us. Eternal rest, grant on to your faithful departed. Mary, daily to Sarah, O Lord. And let perpetual light shine upon her. May she rest in peace. Amen. May the souls of all the faithful departed. Through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. 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 Bless the Lord. Let me get a little kiss by your love. Raise the cup. Raise the cup. Watch, watch here, watch here. Take tall, take tall. Pull tall. Right, right. Your end going to Take some to the side. Hold on, hold on, take a little copy. Take to your right. Right, all right. Come back to me and let me Come back to me and let me Come back to me and let me Come back to me and let me
No one can do what God has in store. So open the heavens, open the heavens, open the That's no, that's no, that's no excuse. I know, right? Excuse, excuse. Mary is now faithful that we still need to face daily. So as we face these trials and tribulations, let's remember those values, those lessons, those memories that we have. And that's how we honor her memory. So as we release the birds, I'd like everyone to shout her name or nickname or whatever we knew her best by. Yes, so, so wherever. Um, Oh, boy, yes. I I so on my conquer tree, as they release the birds, everyone would call up by share. Right? One, two, three. Mary. They would circle on about twice, get a bearings and that's it. I'm going to go
above all powers, above all kings, above all nature and all created things, above all wisdom and all the ways of man. You were here before the world began. Above all kingdoms, above all thrones, above all wonders the world has ever known, above all wealth and treasures of the earth, there's no way to measure what.